Table 23.4.4.8.1 is the Hazen Williams C value table. So for an example, black steel for wet systems including deluge is 120. Table 23.4.3.2.1 is the C value multiplier to convert C values other than C equals 120. For example, C equals 140, the factor is 1.33, increasing the equivalent length of that pipe segment. Section 23.4.2.1.3 references antifreeze calculations. For antifreeze systems greater than 40 gallons in size, friction loss shall be calculated using the Darcy Weisbach formula. Friction loss and backflow preventers. Be aware that the use of backflow preventers can cause significant friction loss in the system. Some manufacturers may provide the friction loss in terms of the actual loss associated with the device while others may provide friction loss values in terms of equivalent length. Problem six, when performing hydraulic calculations, an equivalent length modifier is required. Choose two. For internal pipe diameters, one inch through six inch, different from schedule 40 steel pipe. B, for internal pipe diameters, eight inch and larger, different from schedule 30 steel pipe. C, for all steel pipe regardless of internal pipe diameters, or D, for all hydraulically calculated systems. The solution to problem number six is both A and B. Okay, this slide is for an equivalent length modifier example. Calculate the equivalent length for a 4-inch Schedule 10 90-degree elbow. For internal pipe diameters different than Schedule 40 steel pipe, Schedule 30 for pipe diameters 8-inch and larger, use the formula below found in NFPA 13, Section 23.4.3.1.3.1. The actual diameters of pipe are found in Table A.6.3.2. Continuing our example for 4 inch pipe schedule 10 is divided by 4 inch pipe schedule 40 to the 4.87 power. Therefore, we have 4.26 for schedule 10 and 4.026 inches for schedule 40 and we divide that into the 4.26 to the 4.87 power. 1.058 to the 4.87 power equals a factor of 1.317. Multiply this factor by the equivalent length of a schedule 40 90 degree elbow. Reference table 22.4.3.1.1. So the equivalent length will equal 1.317 times 10 feet, or the equivalent length is equal to 13.17 feet. Problem 7. What is the equivalent length of 4-inch Schedule 10 black steel pipe of a 90-degree long-term elbow? Is it A, 6.57 feet, B, 7.92 feet, C, 10.11 feet or D 12.7. The correct answer for problem number seven is 7.92 feet. The solution per NFPA 13 2016 edition table 23.4.3.1.1 we find the equivalent length for a four inch schedule 40 black steel pipe with a 90 degree long term elbow is 6 feet. However, since we have schedule 10 pipe, a modification factor is in order.
The solution to problem number seven can be found by using table A.6.3.2. Schedule 10 steel pipe inside diameter is equal to 4.260 inches. Schedule 40 steel pipe inside diameter is equal to 4.026 inches. Using the pipe diameters in the formula, to find the factor, it's equal to actual inside diameter divided by Schedule 40 steel pipe inside diameter to the 4.87 power. We divide 4.260 by 4.026 to the 4.87 power, and our factor is 1.32. Step 2. Find the equivalent length for the Schedule 10 pipe. To find the equivalent length for a Schedule 10 pipe, multiply the modification factor by the equivalent length for a 4-inch Schedule 40 black steel pipe with a long-term elbow. The answer is 6 feet times the factor of 1.32 will equal 7.92. Problem 8. Calculate the equivalent length of the same 4-inch Schedule 10 black steel pipe for a 90-degree long turn elbow if it has a C factor of 140 rather than 120. Problem 8 continued. Using C equals 140 rather than C equals 120 is our answer A, 6.97 feet, B, 7.92 feet, C, 10.53 feet, or D, 12.7. The answer for problem number 8 is 10.53 feet. We're using the equivalent length of 7.92 feet calculated in question number 7, multiply by the C value multiplier found in table 23.4.3.2 to adjust for the C value of 140. 7.92 feet times 1.33, the factor, is equal to 10.53 feet. Table 13, 2016 edition, Table 23.4.3.2.1. C value multiplier. Playing Jeopardy, the solution to problem number nine, the correct answer is 24.7 gallons per minute at 19.45 psi. Step one, since this is a dry system, the design area must be increased by 30%. So if we had a square footage of 2,000 square feet, we'd multiply that times 1.3. That'll give us 2,600 square feet. Step two, using NFPA 13, 2016, figure 11.2.3.1.1, determine the density required for the system. From this figure, we find this is 0.19 gallons per minute Per square feet. Per this sketch, determine the minimum pressure and flow required for sprinkler number one. The outline for this is a dry system, schedule 40 black steel pipe, the K is equal to 5.6, it's an ordinary hazard group two, the design area is 2,000 square feet, and the coverage for each sprinkler is equal to 130 square feet is the answer A, 39 gallons per minute at 48.5 psi, B, 23.4 gallons per minute at 17.46 psi, or C, 16.9 GPM at 9.11 psi, or D, 24.7 gallons per minute at 19.45 PS. Problem nine, determine the flow requirement for sprinkler number one. The flow, or Q1, is equal to 
0.19 gallons per minute per square foot times 130 square feet per sprinkler which will equal 24.7 gallons per minute. Next, determine the pressure at sprinkler number 1. Q1 is equal to K times the square root of P. Q1 is equal to 24.7 gallons per minute. K factor is equal to 5.6. P1 is equal to Q1 squared divided by K2 squared. P1 is equal to 24.7 squared divided by the K factor of 5.6 squared. P1 is equal to 610.09 divided by 31.36. P1 is equal to 19.45 PSI. This is figure 11.2.3.1.1. Density Curve, page 13-143. If you have any questions or comments on part three of this tutorial, please contact me at cranandave at gmail.com. Thank you.